Hello, hello. As well as making full reviews for old games I used to play from the 90s and 2000s, I wanted to dive deeper into my favourite specific levels from some of those games. Today, we're gonna take a look at the Lumos Challenge from Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone on PC. Lumos is the fourth and final spell challenge in the game, the others being Flipendo, Wingardium Leviosa, and Incendio. Not including Hermione teaching Harry to lockpick and then rewarding him house points for doing it? I'm sure Professor Flitwick would give you five house points for that charm. The lesson takes place just after collecting five seeds for Hagrid, a stressful Quidditch match against Slytherin, and an opportunity to search around the castle for secrets and surprises. I've actually played this game and many others live here on YouTube and Twitch at the same time, but you need to Frizz your hair a little bit, it's so flat, with more Harry Potter still to come, so subscribe to make sure you don't miss a single one. I'll know if you do. Attending class, we complete tracing the moon symbol a bunch of times, with some level of success, before entering the Lumos challenge. The level begins with Quirrell leading Harry to a stone gargoyle in a dimly lit stone room, complete with red stained glass and ornate stonework and metalwork. Casting Lumos, the statue roars and a glowing yellow platform appears over a chasm, filling the room with a soft, warm light. That's quite bright, isn't it? Once Quirrell concludes his dialogue, we take control of Harry and some dainty harp music plays, giving us a first taste of the mood of this level. An aperitif, if you will. I'd actually kind of love an apple spritz right now, actually. Continuing on over the newly formed platform, we collect the first challenge star and a wooden door ahead opens. We enter into a jaw-droppingly beautiful hall, dappled with colourful light beaming down from the many windows. Candles burn bright in recessed alcoves and carved stone lines the walls and doors. This area features a central hall with two wings at the back. If we head right we find two pottery vases to break and an open archway above and to the left wing we have another open archway, both out of reach with seemingly no way of accessing them. At the end of the hall lies a chest in a bay window lit up with the icy light emanating from the windows, a visual highlight to lead us in that direction. To either side we have flipendo buttons that open each of the portcullises. Portcullis side? Is that the plural? I don't know. One side has a simple corridor with a gargoyle, which reveals a long glowing platform above our heads in the central section of the hall. Heading through the other side leads us to a small circular room, reminiscent of a chapter house, a meeting room often present in cathedrals. They are typically found attached to the main building, and in English medieval cathedrals they are often octagonal or near circular. Casting Lumos on the gargoyle, a series of glowing platforms appear, each one higher up than the last. If the platform in the first room was to teach players what they are, then this section teaches teaches us that they can be found at different heights and lengths. Collecting our second star, Harry heads along a fantastically blue corridor, like I can literally feel how cool the stone walls are from here. Honestly, let me just press my face up against them. <sighs> Another gargoyle activates long platforms across the wings of the hall, and the game sneakily hides a secret in the circular window at the end of the row of platforms, containing the wizard card of Cassandra Vablatsky, a celebrated seer and author of Unfogging the Future. Honestly, sounds like a page turner. This is definitely a secret many people will have missed, myself included when I first played this level. Moving on, we get the third star and head through a corridor as a woodwind version of the Hogwarts theme plays. <sighs> The audio design in this level is pretty fantastic, and imbues a sense of calm after all the chaos Harry's had to face thus far in the game. A calming atmospheric noise can be heard throughout, possibly the wind outside the castle's thick walls, not sounding dissimilar to the rushing herd when one places a shell to their ear. Music also plays sporadically, and only a handful of times throughout the entire level, which makes it even more special when it does happen. This room consists of an out of reach central bridge and two tall red stained glass windows, filling the end of the room with a gorgeous red light. Some of the stained glass and decorations in this level look very real, and having a closer look at the textures, it's highly possible that some of them are in fact photographs of real world windows and textiles, but I can't be sure. But they're gorgeous anyway. Placing this stone block on the pedestal with Wingardium Leviosa frees a trapped gargoyle. The glowing golden light cast from the statues becomes beautifully apparent here. For 
a spell all about casting light, they really nailed the contrast between light and dark in this level, with the cool darkness of the stone architecture, the soft glow of the stained glass windows, the warm golden light of the gargoyles, and the sparkle of the revealed platforms. The new platform moves slowly up and down, the element of motion now added into the mix. Moving onwards, we cast Lumos on a couple of gargoyles to generate a few more platforms, leading us into an absolutely beautifully lit double layered circular room. This room is really interesting. A central section contains ceiling high multicolored windows, filling the inside with a purple glow, much brighter than the dim external section. This brightness was definitely to lead the player to enter this section first and collect the challenge star, activating Peeves' trap card. <laughs> We're locked in until he's defeated and buggers off. After he's gone though, looking around the other side of the windows, we simply find the other side of the window? So what is this source of light? Could it be magic? A few rooms lay around the outer perimeter, one of which contains a secret chest hidden behind an altar. If it wasn't clear by now, this level is very much based off medieval and gothic cathedrals and churches, with an emphasis on both the architecture and the decoration. The level is littered with objects and iconography, such as altars, chalices, candles, candlesticks, and stone reliefs, with some of the rooms specifically feeling like they've been plucked directly from old English cathedrals. We can see through an iron fence at an area that we can't access. Is this a room still to come? In fact, no. It is a secret room from slightly earlier, and the devs are hinting that you might have missed something and want to go back. A very sneaky secret space lies behind this candle alcove, really meaning you have to treat everything in this game as a possible secret. This particular secret reminds me of priest holes, which were secret disguised rooms found in castles and country homes to hide Catholic priests during Elizabeth I's reign, as several priests plotted against her. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that this secret is directly copying or supposed to be a priest hole, but I do think it's an interesting thought that these old buildings that much of Hogwarts was based on hold as many secrets and surprises as the magical school itself. Moving on through a wooden door, we reach a very dimly lit room with a massive chasm, and casting Lumos provides a tiny moving platform over it. This is probably the most dangerous part of the level thus far, and patience is definitely rewarded. Wow! Oh! To the left, a surprise doxy flies out of a painting. Just because you survived the chasm doesn't mean you're safe. Ah! Side note that I love these little rooms through the archways, definitely giving me cathedral side chapels. We generate a vertically moving platform on the other side, at the top of which we find nearly headless Nick. Clever lad, you found my secret napping place. Shh. How suitable that a church theme level has ghosts and spirits. We are unable to progress anymore though, and are forced to explore elsewhere. Continuing further on that right hand passage, we pass through a gorgeous room, down some stairs, past another doxy attack, into this extremely dark and menacing room, with a giant column that looms above and continues downwards forever, complete with opportunities for Harry to jump over. Wow! Just a reminder that this is a school. And indeed, just after the next star, we find a student who's just succumbed to the challenge and can't get back. I think I'm lost. <laughs> Stop At the back of the room, we find a tiny chapel with a flippendo button that causes a nice bit of Hogwarts magic, and the bridge we need is finally there. Love the noise it makes too. <laughs> so satisfying. Retracing our steps and crossing the bridge, we cast Lumos to generate a tiny moving platform higher up that column from before. Love it when levels make you explore the same areas again, but in a different way. After exploring the two side corridors first, we finally face the final platform. One that is pretty stressful and probably quite difficult if you're young, and riding it all the way around, we reach the end. This level is great. A nice calming little break in Harry's adventure, and probably the best looking level in the game, and possibly the whole PC trilogy? But I am a sucker for stained glass, medieval architecture, and glowy things in games. Gameplay wise, it's pretty simple and not too threatening, which is fine as really this lesson is a precursor to the filch sneaking level coming up soon, as that involves quite a large amount of Lumos and platforms. It definitely feels like this level was intended to be a break from Harry's normal life at Hogwarts, which seems to involve... <laughs> I would like to have seen even more secrets to be honest, and perhaps some more fun Hogwarts magic too, as that bridge sequence is pretty sick. But the mood and visuals are completely spot on here. My compliments to the visual designers.
I have a few more of these level analysis videos planned for the future if you want to subscribe to check those out. Let me know down below what you thought about this level or the other levels in this game. Feel free to check out my other Harry Potter game videos, including the Out of Bounds secret videos and tutorial. I have a Patreon if you wanted to help support the channel, and a Discord server where we always seem to end up talking about <laughs> various Harry Potter game stuff. But yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya!